Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to record art videos using your phone, show you the things that you need for the recording and then give you the tips to record. These are the essential equipment you will need for recording with your phone. You will need a tripod, you will need a phone holder that can hold your phone and you must be able to attach this to the tripod. You will need a phone, it doesn't really matter which phone you have as long as it has a camera and you will need a mic. This is actually a headset with earphones and this one uses a 3.5mm audio jack which my phone doesn't have so in this case I also need an adapter for the 3.5mm audio jack. All the things that you should consider before buying equipment will be listed in the video description below because there is actually a lot of things I want to talk about and I don't think you will be able to remember all of them. So the tripod is extremely important. Buy a tripod where you can adjust the height by adjusting the length of the legs and also make sure it has an extension here right at the top. The total height for this tripod when fully extended it's about 1.5 meters. That's actually a good height. This tripod has a plate holder here so I can actually attach this phone holder to the plate holder and lock it into place and with this handle here I can adjust, I can turn this around, tilt it up and down and with this height adjustment I can also push this up and down. So this is adjustable in all angles and then I can tighten it. This top part here can actually be removed so Tripods may or may not come with this top part. If you don't like this one with the handle, you can go with a ball head, which is actually the one that I recommend. So you can just screw it on. You can buy the tripod without the top part and then buy your own ball head if it doesn't come with one. And then attach your phone again to the top part here make sure to screw on very tightly you don't want anything to fall out and this ball head also allows you to adjust your phone in any direction and you can loosen this part again to have this go up and down so when you're recording make sure to tighten everything very tightly Regardless of which one you are getting, make sure it comes with this removable plate so that you can attach it to the phone holder. This plate usually comes together with the ball head or this handle head. There are certain types of clamps where you can clamp to the side of the table and it will have a flexible arm where at the end you can attach your phone. I do not recommend those clamps because when you're drawing, you may move the table, you may shake a bit and then the clamp and the phone will shake and you will have shaky footage. Unless you're using a table that is extremely stable, um, don't get the clamp. The most important thing when buying a phone holder is to make sure that this phone holder is big enough to clamp your phone so you have to take note of the measurement of your phone and compare it with the phone holder. This particular one that I have, it's made by Manfrotto. It's expensive but because it's made of full metal and the build quality is very solid, this is going to last forever. So I don't mind spending a bit more to buy this. And there is this locking mechanism here to lock it. This one is adjustable. So this plate at the bottom, this came with the tripod head and this is removable. This will not come with this phone holder. So to attach it, you can see there is this small hole here and this thing here, just screw it on together and make sure that it's very tight. Oh, you have to take into account of the case that you are using as well because it's going to add to the width of the phone. So this barely fits and I can push this down to make sure that it locks tight so that this doesn't move, doesn't wobble. 
For this phone holder which comes with a tripod mount, you can actually just connect it directly to the tripod and if you do so, you can only adjust the height, you won't be able to adjust the rotation to face your artwork in which case um, it's kind of useless which is why you need to have the plate and the ball head or this handle head. And now let's talk about mics. Audio quality is very important. Even if you can shoot the most beautiful or inspiring video, if your audio quality sucks, people are not going to watch it. So I'm going to show you a few mics that you can consider. You can use the headset that already comes with your phone. The audio quality is all right. It's not the best, but it should be better compared to the internal mics of your phone and usually when recording with the headset sometimes there is the popping sound so I would actually recommend you go with a lavia mic something that looks like this this particular one comes with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and if your phone doesn't have this audio jack then you will have to get an adapter so I'm using an iPhone, I need the 3.5 to the lightning port adapter. This microphone is quite versatile because you can use it for other uh, purposes as well. For other devices, you just need that adapter. Before you buy a Lavia mic, by the way, there are a lot of Lavia mics on Amazon. Make sure you read the description to find out whether or not that mic can be supported by your phone. There are mics that are made specifically for Android and there are mics that are made specifically for iPhone. So some of those mics that are made for Android may not work on iPhones and vice versa. The best mics would be those mics that can work on both platforms, obviously. So try to go with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and find one that comes with the iPhone as well as the Android USB-C adapter. Those are quite versatile because you can use them on both iPhones and Android phones. When you clip your mic on your shirt, make sure that the receiver doesn't touch your shirt so that when you move around like this or when you move your shirt, it's not going to create those uh, rustling sounds. See this foam thing here? This is actually to filter out wind noise or sometimes when you talk very loudly and there is a lot of air coming out from your mouth, um, this will also prevent the uh, popping sounds. Wireless microphones are also available for phones and these are quite convenient because there is no cable. This is the Ceramonic Blink 500 and this particular receiver comes with the lightning port for use with iPhones. You can also get receivers with USB-C for phones with USB-C ports and also with the 3.5mm audio jack so that you can use with digital SLR or mirrorless cameras. So for this particular mic, in order to use it, I just have to connect this receiver to the phone and power on this mic. And there is a mic here where I can clip to my shirt and then I can speak inside the mic. Or I can connect a 3.5 millimeter Lavia mic and clip this to my shirt, in which case I get even better audio quality. So the thing with wireless mics is it's very convenient, but this is powered by battery. So you need to make sure that it doesn't run out of battery while you are recording. If this runs out of battery while you are recording, then you will have to do a re-recording and it will waste a lot of time. It happened to me too many times. And also with internal batteries, this battery that's inside cannot be removed. So eventually the battery inside will fail and this will be useless. If you are recording exclusively at home, then just get a Lavia mic, the one with the cable. If you find that you may want to record your art videos outdoors, in which case uh, maybe the wireless option is more convenient. I actually use this uh, sometimes and I'm outdoors recording. If you want to use the mic from your headset or the internal mics from your phone and there is background noise, 
you can record a short segment in advance and listen to it see whether or not you can hear the background noise if you can hear the noise it's going to be distracting for your audience so maybe it's best to reschedule your recording at another time when there is less noise that's what i usually do and now let's talk about the recording process so to get the best video quality try to use natural light if there is sunlight fantastic if it's a cloudy day like today but it's still bright enough it's still okay to record but if it's going to rain and the clouds are dark it's going to be quite dark in the room so it's not the best time to record even if you switch on your fluorescent light or your room light i mean it's going to be bright but when it comes to recording it's actually not bright enough so the best time to record is actually when there is sunlight outside or if it's a cloudy day make sure that it's still bright enough if you want to record with room light or if you can only record at night chances are you will need additional lighting equipment so i actually have these um, lights here i need to use rechargeable batteries for the lights and these lights are way brighter compared to the room light that i have the thing is you have to spend extra money to buy this and sometimes you may need not just one but two or three and set it around the table and you have to buy rechargeable batteries as well this is actually the most affordable setup i can think of you just need a phone holder a tripod and the lavia mic right now um, this phone is pointing at the artwork at an angle if you want to do a top-down view you will need a horizontal tripod um, like this i've actually made a dedicated video just talking about this arm i'll link in the video description below but to get this you have to spend extra money so recording like this is actually good enough there are five things you should know before you start recording make sure you know the resolution you are using the frame rate that you are using whether or not the mic has been connected properly Make sure you turn off the autofocus if you can turn that off. And lastly, make sure you turn on the airplane mode or at least silence your phone because you don't want your phone to vibrate when a call comes in or worse still, your phone to ring when you are talking. Some phones may not allow you to turn off autofocus. So in that case, please tap on the thing that you want to focus on before you start recording and hopefully the focus will not shift in this case from the paper to your hand and make the art blur currently i have the lavia mic connected make sure while you're recording the cable cannot be seen so i try to have the cable behind me or i have the cable underneath my shirt and if your camera only has one lens and you can see the artwork is actually quite small then you will have to adjust the tripod maybe make it lower and push your sketchbook or your paper closer filling the screen with your art is important because you're making an art video people want to see your art so you can adjust the height um, using this or you can adjust the height with the legs just bring it down as close as possible without um, clipping out the image so make sure that you can see the whole piece of paper or your art properly if your phone has a telephoto lens you can actually raise the tripod higher up and move the phone further away from your art and then use the telephoto lens to frame your art i prefer using a telephoto lens because when i sit down i don't want my head to hit the camera if i'm using a wide angle lens i have to move the phone further down so that it's closer to the art and chances are i'm going to hit the phone with my head i'm usually seated like that behind a tripod behind a table and i will try my best not to hit the tripod otherwise there will be shaky footage i don't usually use the horizontal tripod arm because it's a hassle to set up and to keep now if you are a right-hander 
and you're drawing, make sure that the camera is standing on the left side, on the opposite side, so that when you're drawing, your hand will not block the camera from recording your art. And this is what's going to happen if you are a left-hander and your camera is placed on the left side. So your hand is very likely going to block the camera. I mean, people want to see your art when you are drawing, when you are making an art video. And as much as possible, try to have the camera closer to your artwork. So, I mean, just turn this around to show you where the camera is. So it's at the bottom right side. If you look at the screen here, it's actually at the bottom right side. So this is how it's going to look when the camera is located at the bottom right side. You can adjust the camera however you want, depending on what you want to focus on. So for example, here I want to focus on the pen nib, in which case I have lowered the camera down closer to the paper, and I can see the pen more clearly. You can use the default camera app that's available on the iPhone or Android phones to record your videos. Personally, I like to use apps that give me manual control. So on the iPhone, I actually use Moment, which allows me to record videos. And there is this very useful time-lapse recording feature as well. Filmic Pro is also good, but I prefer Moment. By the way, if you guys know of any good video recording apps available on Android, please share them with me and with others in the comment section below. Okay, as much as possible, try to avoid recording vertical videos if you are sharing your video on YouTube. The most important settings you must know when recording would be the resolution. I usually record at 4K, but 1080p is definitely sufficient. In fact, it's going to take up less storage space and easier and faster to edit. So go with 1080p. And frame rate is also very important. I usually record at 25 frames per second. The frame rate, the FPS has to match the frequency of your power source, basically the power from the wall outlet. Or in this case, if you are recording what you are drawing on your tablet, that frame rate must match the frame rate of your tablet. Otherwise, you are going to notice the flickering, the waves. It's going to be unwatchable. Say you are drawing on paper and you are using room lights, regardless of whether it's fluorescent light or LED lights, those lights actually run at a certain frequency and you need to make sure that the FPS here matches the frequency Otherwise, you're going to see the light source uh, pulsating, again, making the video unwatchable. For video recording apps that give you access to manual controls, you can usually choose the frame rate uh, between 24 FPS, 25, 30, 50 is just a factor of 25 and 60 is a factor of 30. Usually for art videos, uh, you can go with 24, 25 or 30, depending on the light source that you are using. If you have internal lights, internal room lights, or if you are recording a digital drawing, in which case uh, you need to choose the FPS that doesn't uh, flicker. If you are recording with natural light, you can go with 24, 25 or 30. When you're drawing, you're actually not moving that fast, so you don't need to record at 50 and 60 FPS. After you have recorded your video, you can then import the videos onto your computer. I'm using Mac OS, so the popular video editing apps on Mac OS would be Final Cut Pro and iMovie. I use Windows but not for video editing, so you guys have to help me out. Let me know in the comment section below what are the more popular or functional video editing apps that are available on Windows. So after I have imported the videos, the first thing I would check would be whether I have actually uh, recorded audio for the videos. See these jagged lines? These are the audio levels. This tells me that there is audio attached to the video. 
If I see something like this, it tells me that I will have to re-record the video or I would have to do narration. The second thing I look out for is whether or not the video is sharp and if everything is in focus. So here in this case, this is blur, which means I will have to do a retake. So this is not good, obviously. If you use autofocus with your phone, so when you're drawing, sometimes the focus will be on your hand and sometimes it will be on the paper and then it will switch between your hand and the paper constantly. It's going to be unwatchable. So make sure you change your focus to manual focus. Do not use autofocus when you're recording art videos. So after you have checked your clips, it's just a matter of stitching all the clips together and then cutting out the unwanted parts. If my clips are too dark, then I will have to adjust the exposure to make the video look nicer. So after that, I can just join all the clips together and then export this out as a video to share on Facebook or on YouTube or you can share wherever you want. Um, oh, I just remember another app that's available on Mac OS and on Windows. It's called DaVinci Resolve. It's quite a good app. All right, last few things I want to say before I end this video. You may see me recording like this most of the time with my videos with the lavier clip here and the cables showing outside because uh, putting the cables behind the shirt, um, it's quite a hassle. Sometimes I have to do retakes and I have to put in and out, in and out. It's uh, very tedious. And also this little tripod here is a tabletop tripod, it's cute but it's not as versatile compared to a full-size tripod. You can put this on the floor, you can put this on the table as well, but for this, you can only use it on a table. So it's less versatile compared to a proper tripod. All right, so if you guys have any questions regarding video recording with a phone, do let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next video. Bye.